In the name of Lord Jesus, I speak. Uh, so before we pray, we are going to read uh, a passage uh, from the Scriptures uh, for uh, mutual exhortations. Yeah. Uh, I have been uh, assigned uh, with three uh, prayer sessions. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go through the book of Zephaniah briefly uh, with you. Uh, so we turn to the book of Zephaniah. Uh, so I will talk about the chapter yeah, uh, possessions. Okay, the book of Zephaniah. Now, the meaning of the, the word Zephaniah is the Lord uh, has hidden or the Lord hides. Okay. Now, I think um, uh, when we serve the Lord, right, uh, not only we go forth to serve, or we present ourselves as God's workers, I think equally important is that we must uh, be kept uh, by God uh, in uh, in Him and in His love. Okay, we are going to go through chapter 1 yeah, for this session. Uh, uh, chapter 1 talks about uh, the reasons for uh, the, the judgment of God to come. Right? Now, I think there are many reasons stated uh, in this chapter. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, some of the reasons uh, given in this chapter uh, for mutual exhortations. Right. I want you to first read uh, verse, uh, verse 3. Verse 3. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens the fish of the sea and the stumbling blocks. Uh, along with the wicked, I will cut off men from the face of the land, yeah, says the Lord. Okay. Uh, I think here it states uh, the overall reasons yeah, for God to uh, like, you know, pour out His fury yeah, on uh, His people. Uh, here it says uh, the stumbling block. I think in another translation or other version, it means idols. Right? Uh, God is going to remove uh, the idols along with the wicked. Uh, now, the wicked here obviously refers to those who uh, uphold idols instead of upholding gods, right? instead of believing God. So, and I think idolatry has angered God so much. Uh, that uh, he would destroy it, you know, uh, those who worship idols. Yeah, now, I think this is a reference to the people of God, especially when we study the old, the prophetic books. Uh, God is angry with his people because uh, they worship idols. I think if we have read some of the uh, uh, major prophetic books like Isaiah or Ezekiel, uh, you would have found that there are two reasons, yeah, at least two major reasons uh, as to why God would destroy His people or punish His people. Yeah, one of them is the adoptions of idolatry. Uh, that is, instead of worshipping God, they turn to the idols. Yeah, that's the main reason. And the second reason is, you know, uh, the people of God, uh, you know, became puffed up uh, they lifted their their hearts up uh, against God. Right? These are the two main reasons: pride and idolatry. Yeah, they become the reasons for God to judge His people. Right? I think this is like common themes uh, throughout uh, the prophetic books. Right. Okay. Now you find that God does not actually allow uh, idolatry yeah, to appear in the life of His people. Not even, we said, a trace of it uh, is not allowable. Even a small trace is not allowed. Now, we can look at uh, verse 4, uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 4. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. 
the names of the idolatrous priest will with the pagan priest, right? Well, so God does not tolerate even a slightest form of idolatry, not even a trace. Every trace uh, shall be removed uh, from uh, the place of God. Now, I think in the church or in our life, in even in our service to God, uh, any form of idolatry must be uh, removed, right? Okay, I think, you know, uh, uh, when, uh, like myself, when I was younger, and obviously I'm drawn to uh, workers of God because of the work that they have done for God, all right? Now, I think if you are not careful, that also can become a form of idolatry as well, okay? Uh, we worship God, we uh, respect God's workers, uh, but we don't worship them. We don't worship them. We only worship the one true God. Right. Uh, so I think this is an aspect of our service, or our life that we need to understand as well. Now, here it also says the names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests. Right? It's like God's priests has turned idolatrous, Obviously, they have adopted what uh, idolatrous uh, practices. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, as far as uh, today's application is concerned, right? And we know that we only worship the one true God, and we must worship Him in, uh, I would say, the right way. Yeah. And which is in accordance to the scriptures. And. We cannot change our, our way of worshipping God. Yeah, meaning our understanding of God must be accurate. Yeah. Um, we must believe that He is the only true God and He is the one who has created the universe. Uh, if we adopt another form of doctrines, another belief, then we can become idolatrous. Right? We end up not worshipping the true God. Yeah? Now, uh, just like Paul, you know, he said to uh, the church in Corinth, right, uh, that they it seems like they have uh, worshipped another Jesus, yeah, and because they have adopted another gospel, and therefore what works within them is not the spirit of truth, uh, but the spirit of error, okay. Now, so today we worship the true God, yeah, because we have accepted the true gospel, and therefore the spirit within is the spirit of God. As right? simple as that. Okay, so the adoption of another form of gospel, which is contrary to uh, to that of the church, can lead us to become idolatrous. Yeah, right? so we have to be very careful. Uh, it's good to serve God, but we have to serve Him in, in a correct way, if you like. All right? And you'll find that God is very angry yeah, with uh, uh, the prophet in those days uh, who worshipped God and also worshipped Baal at the same time. Well, I want you to look at verse 5. Yeah, verse 5. Now, those who worship the hosts of heavens on the housetops, uh, those who worship this and swear off by the Lord, but also swear by Malcolm. Right? Now, Malcolm is like an Ammonite's god. Right? He's not, uh, you know, a, a god that, that uh, the people of God should worship. Right? Now, here we find that there is like a blending of faith or blending of religions to the true religions. Uh, in those days, uh, they call on the name of the Lord, and at the same time, they also worship uh, the Ammonites' God, yeah? you know, the gods that belongs to the foreigners. Now, I think for today's, we may not blend you know, uh, religions into our Christianity, but I think if we are not careful, we can blend another doctrines, another faith yeah, into our pure beliefs. Okay? And that is being unfaithful towards God. Uh, the church only accepts one form of faith, one form of belief. 
So there must be no blending of other doctrines into the pure doctrines of the church, of God. Right? And you know that uh, the true gospel saves. The doctrine of the church saves. So if we were to blend another faith into the pure gospel of the church, uh, not only we cannot save others, we'll end up destroying ourselves as well. Okay? Now, we look at uh, verse 6. Verse six. Uh, those who have turned back from uh, following the Lord and have not sought the Lord nor inquire of Him. Uh, two things mentioned here, two points. Uh, they have turned back from following the Lord. Now, what does it mean following the Lord? So obviously, you know, in those days they have to follow the law of Moses. Uh, whatever the law of Moses requires them to do, yeah, they have to follow. Yeah. Now, what application can we learn in our context today? I want you to turn to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, we read uh, chapter, chapter 12. Yeah. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, uh, verse 26. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serve me, serve me, him my father will honor. Uh, here it talks about you know following Christ wherever Christ is. Uh, we must follow. No, what does it mean here? Right. How, how how do we follow Christ? I think the the general principle is that we do what the Bible requires to do, right? And we keep ourselves in God, and that is following Christ. But I think there is a specific uh, context yeah, in following Christ. Now, I want you to read uh, Revelations chapter 14. Uh, turn to the book of Revelations chapter 14. Uh, we read verse 4. And we read uh, verse 5 as well. Uh, here it talks about the 144,000. Uh, these are the ones who were not defiled with wo woman, women, for they are virgins. Uh, these are the ones who follow the lambs wherever he goes. Uh, these were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the lamb. Now, I think in this context, it means that those who follow God uh, keep themselves um, uh, upright morally uh, and also wherever you know the lamb uh, goes uh, they follow as well now what does it mean uh, that belongs to God obviously first fruits mean belongs to God I think when we join verse 5 together then we can have a better understanding of what it means right okay now and in their mouth was found no deceit right no deceit uh, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Uh, when you look at uh, the Old Testament scriptures, yeah, the false teachers prophesize from their own deceit, the deceit of their hearts. Meaning, whatever they said, the prophecy that they talk about did not come from God. It, come from, it came from the imagination of their hearts. Yeah, it's not really from God. Uh, so, I think here it also tells us that to follow God uh, means that we not only uh, talk about Christ, we talk about the truth, and the truth has to come from the heart, from a pure heart. Now, obviously, there is a specific context here. Now, I want you to read First uh, Peter chapter chapter two, yeah, to understand it better. Uh, we read uh, verse 21, uh, 21 and 22. Now, for to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, 
leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now, what kind of steps should we follow? Verse 22. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Uh, this is the example that Christ has set, and we must follow this example of Christ. Now, when you look at the Revelation chapter 14, yeah, uh, the 144,000 uh, are people who uh, like, were upright before God, yeah, whose mouth, whose mouth yeah, did not speak deceit. Right? Now, I think, I think uh, in, in chapter 13, you can see the work of the beast, and the beast, you know, uh, would open his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Yeah. Practically, he's saying that it's like the beast would attack the church. Yeah. Now, to attack the church also to attack the people of God, to attack God's people. I think in those instances, we must learn from the example of Christ. Yeah. Now, that does not mean that you do not speak out for the truth. Uh, because we have been told that we need to contend for the faith of God to the very end. Right? Uh, so to follow Christ yeah, means you contend for the faith and when you attack, you learn from the example of Christ. Okay? This is following uh, Jesus Christ. Right? Now we turn back to uh, Zephaniah. Zephaniah, now we look at uh, uh, verse 12. Yeah? Uh, come back to Zephaniah chapter 1, we read uh, verse 12. Now it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency. Uh, who said in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do uh, evil. Uh, here, uh, we are told that God would search out, you know, Jerusalem with lamps. Yeah, to find out exactly, you know, uh, the people within and what their mindsets uh, really are. Okay. Now, here we find that uh, these people actually are very much settled in complacency. Now, I think our normal understanding of complacency is like, you know, we are happy with who we are, we're happy with what we have, you know, uh, we are happy with our, our faith conditions, put it this way. I think the complacency here points to a kind of mindset which is against, against God's principle. It seems like the people here did not believe in God would act. Yeah? It's like God is a God of inactions. Yeah, but in reality, we know that God uh, does act. Uh, he did act in history as well, and He also acts today, and He will continue to act against those who what? Uh, who go against Him, who uh, have adopted uh, idolatry. Right? Now, I think this is a very, uh, a kind of very harmful mindset to have. Yeah. Practically, they did not believe in the principle of God at all. Right? It's like, you know, they didn't really know who the, the Lord is. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's why they don't believe that, you know, the Lord will do good, nor will He do evil. It's a kind of mindset. You know, it's like that's turned them into uh, people who are very rebellious against God. Uh, if God did not do, if God did not act against evil people, then obviously, you know, anyone can do anything they want. But we know that the God whom we believe in is a God of actions. Yeah, he is also a principled God. Yeah. And He does not lie. And He is faithful. And whatever He said or stated in the Scriptures will surely come to pass. Or will surely transpire. Okay. Now, so I think, I think for us to, uh, to be kept away from the wrath of God, yeah, we must make sure that we don't commit the wrong as committed here by 
the chosen people of God at the time. All right? So I think it's good, again, uh, to serve God, uh, but our mindset must be fine-tuned yeah, to be in line with yeah, the Word of God, uh, in a way. Okay, uh, now we are going to pray.